or I hope you had a good experience of Malta. And in fact, you came for a holiday, or it was holiday, or English language, English, OK. Because it's a, a very important part of our tourism industry, in fact, English language teaching. Uh, a bit about Maltese tourism. Uh, Maltese uh, tourism is the main pillar, main pillar of our economy. It contributes directly and indirectly approximately to one third of our gross domestic product. So uh, that explains why we have a minister responsible for uh, tourism and aviation, because as an island state, obviously our air connections are uh, uh, constitute 98 percent of our passenger traffic, inwards and outwards from Malta. So uh, our aviation policy and our airline and route development is very important for tourism and for business and even for cultural diplomacy, that our interaction with, with, uh, with people. Tourism figures reached, we managed to reach uh, all-time record levels in 2014. We reached, uh, and I'm, I'm not going to bore you with figures, but it's around, uh, yearly, it's around four times our population. Our population is 416,000. And we managed to have, we managed to have four times our population yearly as tourists. Our three main markets are the United Kingdom, uh, for obvious reasons, because since uh, ni for, for, till 1964, we were, we were a British colony. And so we have, obviously, a cultural belongingness uh, to, towards the United Kingdom. The second source market is Italy, due to our proximity as well to, to the Republic of Italy. And thirdly, it is, it is in fact, Germany. Uh, the German market has a lot of potential uh, to, to Malta, and we intend to increase. We, we have uh, policies, and this, uh, that explains as well my presence at the, at the ITB in Berlin, that we, we believe in the potential of the German market, and we intend to increase, increase our efforts. As regards, as regards this uh, question of cultural diplomacy, Malta has a very strategic uh, position in the Mediterranean. So in my opinion, it, it, it has been in history. And in my opinion, it still has to play uh, very, uh, the role of a protagonist in the Mediterranean. It is one of the most stable, politically stable countries in the region. It is uh, relatively a new member of the European Union, uh, which uh, gives us uh, a further strength as a small country as well, and a voice in such an important institution uh, as, as the European Union. We are facing important challenges, not only economically, uh, apart from tourism, apart from financial services, which are uh, our two biggest, biggest industries, but we are facing challenges as well, diplomatic challenges in the Mediterranean, for obvious reasons, for the situation as it is at the moment in the Mediterranean, which, uh, as a neutral country, Malta is, has, uh, the, uh, um, is, is a neutral country, its neutrality is enshrined in the Constitution, and we, uh, we embrace it a lot in the sense that we, we have a policy of never indulging in any uh, military military activity, apart from humanitarian situations. We managed as well the Libya crisis in uh, 2011, which I think uh, our former Prime Minister, uh, Lawrence Gonzi, uh, made a, a very good job of, of, that, of that situation. As a government, we are, in, we are a new government. Uh, it's a, a Labour government after a quarter of a century in opposition. So that explains that a lot of the members of the government are uh, relatively young in, in politics. We have one of the biggest uh, majorities in, in history, parliamentary majorities in Maltese history, because uh, our situation is uh, similar or more more stable than the British one. We have two big parties which uh, have relatively, even when they are in government, relatively 
small majorities, but but uh, we uh, we have a moderate. We are on a moderate left and moderate right, so we don't have a situation of uh, any extremist, any type of extremist parties which have popularity. So relatively, we are quite stable, and this this helps us more in promoting uh, culture, cultural diplomacy. And I extend an invitation straight away f uh, to to this institute, so that we can organize we can organize uh, a good a good event in Malta, and I extend the help of my ministry as well, as, as far as promotion is concerned. We already organized something similar with, with the help of non-governmental entities in, uh, in the tourism sector, which is the Mediterranean Tourism Forum, wherein we discuss tourism trends in the Mediterranean and how we can uh, build an integrated Mediterranean tourism offer for non-EU markets to tap non-EU non -EU markets such as China, Russia, uh, India. But as well, we view culture and diplomacy as very important tools wherein we can use them both for their sake, because culture is an important, uh, it's, it's our identity, our belongingness. But at the same time, culture has as well uh, an economic value which uh, every country in the Mediterranean should as well exploit for economic and tourism purposes. Diplomacy is very, it's, it comes natural for Malta in the sense that we are in a very strategic geopolitical position and we intend, we intend to uh, play uh, the, the diplomatic part in, a, in an active manner and that, that is why I extend the invitation so we can discuss uh, important issues of culture diplomacy in an area, unfortunately, where at the moment it is an area of, uh, of instability. The neighboring countries have uh, issues of instability, which, luckily enough, makes Malta uh, the, the safest uh, destination in, in the region. I won't uh, take longer with, with, with my speech. In fact, I prepared the speech, but I preferred to give you an overview of Malta and of our positioning. Uh, with regards to the, the last point, which, which was mentioned in the discussion, it's with regards to branding. It is very important, in my opinion, that as the, the, previous, the previous speakers elo elo eloquently said, that you, we need to synergize our different branding even within the same country. At the moment, there is a, a discussion in Malta where there, we should project Malta with position Malta with one brand. What is Malta? For a lot of people, uh, for a lot of Europeans or non-Europeans who know about Malta, because obviously we have, as a small country, we have a problem as well of visibility, although we can say that considering our size, we have visibility for, for different reasons in history. Our road, for example, in, in, the second, in the Second World War in the Mediterranean. Uh, the Bush-Gorbachev meeting in Malta, which uh, was the first meeting which led to the, to the termination of the Cold War. That is a very important uh, event which gave us visibil visibility. But the majority of people will view Malta as a sun and sea destination. It's, uh, as a tourism, a nice tourism destination. But Malta is more than that. Malta is financial services. Malta is a leader in uh, remote gaming. Malta is a, an important exporter as well in uh, very fine technical components used in, in different uh, mechanical machines. These things are not known to the world. They, they see Malta as only as a tourism destination. So there is a discussion, a national discussion on how we should brand Malta, whether we should come out and project Malta with uh, one brand. There is that school of thought. I'm not in favor to that school of thought. I'm more in favor of a synergy of different brands, different aspects of Malta, but uh, which work in a more coordinated and concerted fashion. So we need, even as a country, in line as, 
uh, a bit of autocriticism to the way we do things, I think we should coordinate more our branding. We should project ourselves more in a coordinated fashion. But uh, this is a nation branding is a very important topic. It is a topic which is discussed not only in Europe, but an, on an international level. Unfortunately, I think uh, it, nation branding gets mixed up with marketing or with big budgets of how you market a country. It's, in my opinion, it's more than that, and it's a more in, uh, you need a more intelligent approach than just uh, putting money just to market a specific sector of your country. But uh, I, I anticipate that it will be a very important topic uh, for discussion. Uh, I'll thank you again, and if, please, if you have any questions about Malta, any uh, curiosities or points for discussion, please just just ask. Well, thank you very much, uh, Minister, you, for the excellent presentation. I'm sure you've inspired some questions and comments. I would ask you to please raise your hand, and if you could also be so kind as to tell us where you're from, I think that would be interesting for the Minister as well. Uh, I'm Valeria, I'm Italian, and please do not criticize my English because I've studied English oh, in Malta. Oh, uh, I was going to tell you I have good English. <laughs> uh, no, I just have this question. Uh, don't you think that you can um, change the brand of Malta, taking a more responsible role in managing the migration crisis of the Mediterranean? That's a It's a very... Yes, yes, of course, of course. So can you take me two or three questions together then? Uh, here in the front, there's someone very much. Yes. Okay, uh, thank you so much because uh, it was, for me, it was the first time to hear about this Malta all description. Um, uh, I was thinking that uh, what is the role of, uh, in addition to uh, maybe political facilitation, uh, you mentioned about your neighbors and as well as Russia and American uh, political meetings. Uh, what is the um, basic uh, economic competitiveness of Malta, which brings it uh, on the international uh, financial markets? Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Lewis. My question to you is this. Um, Malta is a very small country, and you said you attract a lot of tourists. Now, looking at our theme, it talks about sustainable tourism. So what are you doing to manage uh, these uh, many people coming into your country to preserve your environment? Thank you. I know we are, sorry, <laughs> hello, I'm Italian. Um, I know we're a little behind, so um, just if you have time, I would like to know more about this forum, Mediterranean forum, um, that you mentioned before. Thanks. Okay. Okay, it's okay. The, the first question is regards uh, migration problems. Obviously, this is a common, a common problem for Malta and a big problem for Italy as well. It is a problem which Malta, both Malta and Italy, share a common front with regards to the European Union. We believe that the migration issue is not a problem of Malta and Italy alone, but it is a problem of the European Union. Uh, the European Union helps as well uh, financially and with with certain resources of surveillance and even intake of, of migrants. But uh, in my opinion, it's, it's never enough. It's, the problem has become bigger. We are anticipating as well that probably there will be different, uh, a different type of migration, not only economic migrants. At the moment, we have economic, the, the, the majority are economic migrants. They are people who are so desperate in, in, in their country that they wish not particularly to come to Malta, but they wish to come to Europe, to mainland Europe, for a better future. Uh, we do our best, obviously. Uh, the best at times, it's, it's not enough, and we receive criticism. Malta, as much as Italy, that 
uh, we uh, sort of we don't give the best treatment possible to to uh, to the migrants. Obviously, it's a question of as well of our limited resources. Malta, uh, what what is Malta doing? Malta has been pushing uh, diplomatically in the EU institutions and the, our different prime ministers for more burden sharing and for an automatic situation wherein uh, we don't have to uh, make pleas or request. It is a problem which is practically every year now. I mean, Italy has been, uh, and, and through the intervention of Italy, to a certain extent, in Malta, the, the situation got uh, a bit better. But it's still a problem of Southern Europe, which we have to tackle. Uh, we, don't have, we don't have easy solutions, and we don't have any solutions which will solve this problem overnight because it, it is something beyond the control of Malta and beyond the control of Italy. We are anticipating a situation which will get worse when and if, unluckily, uh, the situation in Libya will produce as well uh, a situation of, of, of now not of economic migrants but also of refugees, of, of war refugees. So uh, we are prepared for the situation as Italy, we collaborate in a, in a very good manner with, 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 the, with, with, with the Italian government, and we are uh, pushing diplomatically that we receive the best, uh, the best help and the, the most adequate help possible from, from the European Union and from the international community as well. That is the first uh, question. The second question is, with regards to uh, your question, with regards what uh, makes us uh, competitive or how we, we are competitive internationally. That's a very good question because Malta is a country without any, without any uh, resources, apart from human resources. Uh, I believe that we are competitive because we are different, different from, uh, from other Mediterranean countries in the sense that we have uh, what I can say is British discipline. We, we got a lot, a lot from, from the British uh, in the sense that we have a good workforce, a skilled workforce, a workforce which responds to uh, the demands of the market as well. Uh, for example, I can, I can give you uh, a specific example, we have a very, very good, in the aviation sector, we have very good MROs, maintenance and repairs comp, repair company. One of them is Lufthansa Technique, which, uh, empl which it's in, in the organization, 98% of the workers are in fact Maltese, uh, in, in a sector which re requires very specific skills. So, Despite our size, which has its, its advantages as well, uh, it gives us more, more flexibility, and we are very fast, even as a government, in our decision-making processes to change things when, uh, when necessary. The third question is as regards sustainable tourism. Uh, it is uh, an ongoing debate in the tourism sector, this, this question of sustainability. And I, I don't view uh, sustainable tourism only with regards to respect to, uh, to, to the environment or the introduction of environment-friendly measures. That is important uh, even to uh, not only to reach, to reach uh, targets uh, of, um, made by the European Commission, but we believe that sustainable tourism gives us another as well niche tourism, an important tourism niche market as well. So uh, we work on it more than other countries in the sense that we have to manage numbers. We are getting record numbers of tourism, but our size, uh, in certain areas, it is already creating a, a particular strain on our in infrastructure. In, in the most uh, popular tourism areas, we have to manage the numbers in summer months, and we have to be efficient in, in the way we do things. So we, we are working on a more, from a practical manner, we are working on a more all year round operation. We want more tourists between uh, October and March more than in summer.
and that will give us a more stable, uh, more stable tourism sector. We are working as well on a better geographical spread of tourism, not only tourism uh, restricted in certain tourism zones, which are popular with, with tourists and with certain markets, for example, the Itali in the Italian market there are specific areas in, in central Malta which are very popular. We are trying to create a situation where the whole country is a tourism zone, but, but in, a, in a sustained manner. As regards the last question, as regards the Mediterranean Tourism Forum, this has been an initiative taken by one of the um, largest and most influential uh, organization in, uh, in Malta with regards to tourism. We uh, roped in as well the United Nations World Tourism Organization. And the idea, the idea is to uh, get uh, politicians, uh, tourism operators, not only from, from the Mediterranean, not only uh, from Europe, but, but worldwide. And we discuss issues of tourism, uh, sustainability, branding, which are very important. Uh, issues, whether we should coordinate as Mediterranean countries to tap uh, source markets which are still new for, for the Mediterranean, that is non-EU non -EU markets such as the, 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 the American market. And the idea is not only to view uh, tourism, but tourism-related subjects, an important subject which will, uh, which will uh, be discussed that this year, I'm sure it will be uh, the, the security related aspects to tourism because uh, obviously the tourist will want assurance of a safe destination. Safety and security have become very important issues in all, in all areas and in diplomacy, but as well even in motivating the choice of a potential tourist where, where to choose as a, as a tourism destination. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Minister, for an excellent presentation, as well as for taking the time to respond to the questions and the comments okay. of the audience. Could we just take one photo, maybe, before yes, you leave the stage, if my colleague can, can come? Uh, and then uh, hopefully we will see each other again in Malta. Yes. Uh, Are we, should we come closer? Or? So we're not, uh, Maybe in Um, no, so thank you very much, uh, Mr. Yeah, Minister. Course, and then yeah. just, just an announcement for everyone. Uh, we will be documenting, or we have been documenting the entire conference. So uh, for the minister, as well as for everyone, this will all be available probably within two to three weeks on our webpage. We'll also put it on Facebook as well as Twitter. Uh, we now have a lunch break until 2.30. So uh, for anyone who would like, the restaurant is waiting for you downstairs. And uh, I think they have a special beef bourguignon today. So uh, bon appétit, and uh, we'll meet back here at 2.30.